Well, Donald Trump, a uh, guy I voted for, and, uh, you know, he's definitely the lesser of the two evils by far, for crying out loud. Um, I know he's made a lot of campaigning promises. I don't know if he's be able to keep all that stuff. But, uh, hey, I just want to bring out an important, important point about what it really means when Trump's going to be in the presidency. And it's not going to really be his fault. It's really like, you know, there's going to be the moment of the truth is going to come one way or the other, whether it's going to come sooner or later. And it should have really came sooner. What I'm getting at is the ongoing trade deficits we've been having with the rest of the world, where we've been paying for cheap goods from China, India, Vietnam, and used to be cheap goods from Japan originally, and then went to Korea, then went to China, Vietnam, India, Laos, whatever, you know, Cambodia, Indonesia, you know, I don't know, maybe even Brazil, I'm not even sure. But, you know, that's trade imbalance. We can't just keep going on like that forever. There's been a lot of, uh, um, and Trump's right about that. we got to bring the jobs back to the United States. But here's my point on this deal. You see, the only reason the Chinese want to peg their currency, the yuan, to the U.S. dollar is so they can export, export, export and keep their industries afloat. What's going to happen when Trump tries to put up trade barriers, or I don't even want to use the word barriers, I mean, I guess let's use the word like, where he's going to put tariffs or something, or make the Chinese give us more fair deals. Well, you know what's going to happen? They're going to say, well, the hell with freaking trying to keep our currency pegged to the dollar because we're not going to be able to export as much because, say, there's going to be a tariff on our goods or something. And so the whole incentive of having the Chinese yuan pegged to the dollar a certain way is going to be gone. What ergo, what does that mean? it means that the dollar is going to lose value. In other words, the Chinese decide not to peg their currency to the dollar for the benefit of exporting goods to the United States mainly and say also the European market. What's going to happen to the value of other currencies? They're going to be going down in relationship to the yuan, right? It's like uh, well, there's a lot of variables that are, you know, in the mix here, but you know, if one goes up, well, the others go down. That's really what happens. Right now, the dollar is very strong. The index is over 100. Now, this isn't going to happen next week, but I think the writing's on the wall. And this is actually something that's been, you know, thrown around in the, um, I don't know if you want to call it just conspiracy circles, but also the gold advocates, silver advocate circles about eventually, you know, after QE, is, you know, was one of the stratagems of the Federal Reserve. What's what's the last thing they're going to do to actually keep the United States afloat with all the debt that the United States has accumulated, not just with the trade imbalance, but also the debt, all the debt the United States has accumulated. It's going to be devalued a dollar. Now, I think it's not going to be like we devalued a dollar. I think it's going to, well, it's it's a given. I mean, it's not really rocket scientists, you know, rocket science. It's really, um, you know, you can see what the trend is right now. China, China is like, well, okay, yeah, I mean, it's not like unfair trade balance. I don't know if you want to call it that because what are they getting in exchange for the goods that they manufacture and the labor that they use to produce these goods? They're getting... U.S. dollars, right? I mean, I what good of an investment that is in the long term. Um, but on the, but their whole incentive to keep this going is that they export to us mainly, mainly the United States. We're like their biggest Europe and the United States. I think Europe, as an aggregate, is bigger than a bigger customer to China and the United States. But China, you know, Russia, I mean, the United States is a big, big customer of China. So if Trump is going to, you know, and I'm not criticizing Trump's policies. This should have been done a long time ago. And I know it's not in the interest of the globalists because they're trying to make like it a level playing field throughout the world where each country is weak, for, you know, by the main peoples that live in it. There's going to be massive amounts of serfs and there's going to be the feudal lords. And they want it this way, right? That's, but Trump is like, you know, make America great again. Actually, this make America great again is going to probably let, look good because um, I'm not saying it's his fault. I'm, I'm just saying this has just been 
going on for so many damn years. It's, you know, it's been going on since like the 70s for crying out loud. I mean, when when did imports start really hammering the United States back? Even maybe to guess the early 70s, and um, you know. When did we start first becoming a debtor nation? I think it was around the 70s. When did we go off to your gold standard? I think it was in 1973 where Richards M. Nixon, Mr. Milhouse, Tricky Dick Nixon. But I, I think Trump's legit, but it's like, you know, it's like he's saying, you know, really to wake, make America great again, we got to go back to old discipline. we got to be working, like, a lot harder than the Chinese. And the Americans aren't used to that anymore. You know, I mean, kids, they go to a, a school, you know, crap, I used to hitchhike back from high school, it was 13 miles away, and it wasn't just all hitchhiking, it was, a lot of it was walking, even if it was snowing out, right, I mean, several miles of that was walking, and that was back when I was like 15 years old, right, 13 miles away to go to prep school, right. And getting back was not easy. <laughs> I used to be getting back really late after track practice, so it was like nighttime. Uh, kind of like um, a dangerous thing, you know, back then. That's the. But, you know, that was me. I mean, most people, they need a ride to go to school if they're a half a mile away and it's sunny out and they don't want to walk. Uh, but that goes right along with the work ethic. And, uh, you know, I'm showing some gold here because I think what's going to happen with the United States dollar, I don't think it's going to go to oblivion, but it's going to lose a lot of its clout. Um, and what I'm really emphasizing here is that we got the new guy on the block, Trump. Now, if Hillary was in, maybe this trade imbalance with China would keep going, but, you know, it can't go forever. So what Trump's doing right was going to be doing here in the immediate future, he's going to be talking about... Well, let's fix this. Let's uh, put tariffs on foreign goods. And let's bring industries back in the United States. Now, some of it's going to be really positive for bringing in jobs to the United States. But what I think we're it, it's not it's nothing you can do about it. It's not his fault. This has just been this way for a long time. I mean, this is he's doing the corrective steps. But what's going to happen if you start putting in some kind of incentives? whereby these countries, or maybe taxation incentives, whereby these countries are not going to be able to import as many products into the United States, then they have absolutely no rationale to keep pegging their currency real low in relationship to the dollar. And if they don't do that, what that happens is if the if Chinese yuan gets stronger, because they don't care about freaking keeping the one weeks for exports anymore because of Trump policies. I'm, a criti I'm not criticizing Trump. I'm just saying he's doing the right thing. That's what needs to be done. If the Chinese yuan gets stronger, the dollar gets weaker. It's like, you know, it's like one area you step on goes up, and the other area, if you step on the area that goes up, the other the one that was down goes up. It's it's all relational. So. And if Hillary was in, I mean, maybe this scheme would keep going for a little while longer, but then it would implode and hit a brick wall right at the end. So, you know, it's going to be a tough time. And one thing I wish, just as a side note, I'm going to tell you, I'm probably going to get into, I might do, I might do this later. I'm going to get some books on this. I'm not going to make moonshine, but uh, if the government collapses, I will make moonshine because then the government ain't going to be around if we can play, pull out their rule book. But what I'm going to do is probably make essential oils with this damn thing because essential oils is one of the most healing uh, methods going. You know, essential oils like the thieves' oil that they used back during the boot boot panic plague. The thieves used to steal things because everybody was dying of boot panic plague, and they put this mixture of essential oils on them, nicknamed thieves' oil, and they would never get the bubonic plague. Well. This would also be something we could sell back to China, too. Besides, we could be home-brewed. I don't even know why this is outlawed in the United States. To me, you know, we're talking about dollars, the dollar's value being greatly diminished. I know we talk about silver and gold. But I sure as hell wish we can uh, uh, have stills in our own backyard, like 
back in the 1800s where things were a lot more legal and we can make our own money because I can tell you one thing moonshine that you can run your car off of and also use for medicinal purposes and drink and get drunk off of is money itself it's better than gold and silver because this is the mine that just keeps producing where you don't need a shovel you're just gonna you know get your corn mash and your fire going and all that other kind of crap but anyway I think Trump would agree with that and maybe he might drink to that and maybe this would be something we could petition to Trump <laughs> because you know when a dollar the dollar is gonna get greatly devalued like just outlined it I told you a few times why because the incentive for China to keep its currency pegged low against the dollar is not going to be there if Trump, and I'm not criticizing Trump for this, okay, I'm not, if Trump starts putting up tariffs or other incentives whereby if China imports something, it's going to cost them more money, so it's not going to be lucrative for them to do business in the United States, just export something carte blanche so they're going to be looking at their model their business model which is keeping the, the yuan pegged to the dollar very low and you're going to say what's the point let's just let the yuan get stronger and when the yuan gets stronger by default it's all relational the way everything works by default the dollar gets weaker the yuan is actually a very powerful important international currency it's not one of the little guys out there so, and that's going to make everything in the United States cost more. And it's, you know, I know they're going to blame this guy on it, but it's not his fault because this is the corrective steps that need to be done uh, to fix everything. And he's like, he's going to be the fall guy. I can imagine what's going to happen. I'm really on his side more and more now. But, you know, for us people that are entrepreneurs, I sure hope Mr. Trump makes moonshining legal because um, I'd like to see make America great through moonshining how about that would that you know what if I was running for president or vice president or whatever assistant dog tech catcher of the of the secretary of the interior that would be my motto make America great through moonshining why the hell they make this stuff illegal you could you know I was looking this up and this is kind of a side topic and it's kind of pissing me off because I was thinking you know if I was distilling my own spirits I could stick this in my Suzuki SJ413 four-wheel drive and uh, with my HHO kit, and I really probably would have free energy more or less because uh, uh, it'd be growing from the ground. Why? Why do I need to go to a gas station? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what. I don't already know why because they gotta collect their taxes somehow for what? Because you're the goober, the goberman. God. Anyway, it's just a side note. <laughs> I don't, you know, but I'm like getting pissed off at this crap. Every time you look at something that's a good deal, that could be a good scam, not a scam, but something you can pursue, um, that could basically be easy to do and, and uh, very fulfilling. They got a rule against it, right? And uh, I just hope Mr. Trump, when he gets in there, President Trump, you know, very soon, hopefully, um, he relaxes the rules on uh, moonshining. Now, if somebody wants to put a petition up at the White House about, please, when Trump gets inaugurated, please, Mr. Trump, by executive order, could you make moonshining legal in this country again? <laughs> I wonder how many million people would freaking sign for that again. That would be great. You know, if you make your own moonshine for your own personal freaking consumption and use in your own car, um, it's not taxed. As long as you're not retailing it to other people or putting it out there on the market. What do you think about that? Because we got to have a side business when a dollar goes down and you got all this wampum paper that says, you know, $1, $5, $20, $50, and your Ben Franklin's and all that other crap. And it turn out they're not going to be buying as much stuff because the Chinese products that we mainly get today are going to be costing many times more. And if you look back at some of the videos I did here recently, I've been buying loads of Chinese and Pakistani knives that are decent quality. They're not the best crap around, I know. But I got USA ones, the, the real deals. And why am I doing that? Because I think they're going to probably go up in price several times. 
Um, just if you remember back in the 1970s, uh, the Japanese products were pretty cheap. and I mean, Japanese make some good products, but they were very inexpensive. And I remember what happened with the yuan. With, I mean, the yen. The yen, when they allowed it to float. <laughs> it's like we were being overseas in Japan when that happened. Inside of a year, we went from rich to poor, you know. And that's I think that's what's going to happen with uh, the deal with China when Trump's in office. Not saying it's his fault. He's doing the right thing. I already know what the major media is going to crucify him, but I'm going to I'm going to be working against the major media, and I'm going to tell you one thing. This is one of the running reasons I'm on YouTube. It's not really for financial. It's like I can pretty much do what I want, and uh, you know, quite honestly, I'm not playing any freaking angles here for profit. You know, all these crazy profit angles where people fund me on this and fund me on that. I don't do that crap. But quite honestly, it's uh, getting much, much, much tougher to make money on this type of stuff versus what it was. Oh, every year it gets a lot. You you got to actually double up your efforts, in which I do. Because I outwork the freaking bast other bastards, and you might notice on a lot of their YouTube channels, there's less and less videos coming out. That's because people are not getting paid as much. Not saying anything against YouTube, but I don't know what's going on. I think it could be just the average retail market is like that's telling you that's a reflection of the average retail market in the United States. There's not that much activity going on. So for us to bring activity back to the United States means activity another word for that is work so when people actually have to work and produce some people are going to be crying and be saying oh Trump you're so bad well no that's because that is why America was so much stronger back in the 40s and 1950s and early 1960s because people had a lot more of that work ethic and don't tell me this this guy works I know one thing whether you like Trump or not, he ain't no lazy person. I could tell you that right now. He's intelligent. He's, he's, he works his ass off. And he does have this patriotic streak. So let's hope he survives. But I'm just warning you not to be a conspiracy video or drama video. Because this isn't going to happen in a week. But I think it's going to happen during his administration. You're going to see a major change in the valuation of the dollar versus the, the yuan. Because the yuan, the Chinese no longer are going to have the incentive to keep that wand peg very low. Thus, which is by default, if the wand goes up, by default, the dollar is going to lose a lot of its clout. Are all these cheap imported goods that you go buy in stores left and right, they're going to be very expensive. So I've been buying a lot of cheap imported halfway decent knives because I've noticed those things, those things last like years, man, as long as you don't freaking abuse them, right? One of my little survival tips, if you want to look at some of that junk, fine. Actually, the stuff I buy is stuff I buy for me after doing as much research as possible. And I always look for the best value. And um, in the future, I don't know, it might be a year from now, though, I might have a still. And um, it's going to be used for making essential oils. But if the government collapses and, it, and all the rule books go out the window... I'm going to be making moonshine with that baby. And if the government collapses, I hope YouTube is still around. <laughs> Keep the private sector going. The hell with the government. We don't need the stupid government. Keep the free enterprise going. And if government's collapsed and we're all making moonshine, well, we can all have, we can all be getting drunk. And I don't drink, but I'll drink if it's not taxed. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. One of the major reasons I don't drink is because it's taxed. The other reason is you waste a lot of time and money on it. Well, it won't be taxed. I won't be wasting money on it. I might be wasting time on it. And, uh, you know, you lose a lot of time the next day if you got a hangover. So I don't drink anymore. I used to do it when I was 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, up to like 30 something. And they probably sound like a drink sometimes because I probably still got that in me because, man, we used to freaking really hit the sh hit the stuff, man, that way back in the day. But I haven't really been drinking nothing at all for many, many years. Not that I'm addicted to it or anything. I'm not addicted to it, but um, not in the least. But I get pissed off at it because I just I figure it's a it's a government racket. <laughs> That's why they make this illegal. 
So Trump, let's make um, when the dollar goes down, and you know all these things start looking like it's falling apart. Let's make America great through moonshine. Okay, over and out.